two teams from the Classic 8 meeting in the final eight, McWanago and Arrowhead. The regular season matchup went to McWanago, the Indians winning right here on the home field of the two-time defending Division I state champs. Another win Friday night in the Level 3 playoffs, and McWanago could start thinking about a trip to Madison of their own. But Arrowhead quarterback Johnny Duranzo was knocked out of that game. He's healthy, and it's the Warhawks' time of year. Duranzo to Cody Salhausen. He runs the tightrope, and it's a race. Big bump, but a 53-yard touchdown, 7-0 Warhawks. McWanago answers with a drive that takes up the rest of the quarter. Colton Williams just short of the goal line, but on the first play of the second quarter, Jacob Kruger keeps it himself, and it's a 7-7 game. Duranzo completed just eight passes all night, but they were good for 176 yards and two scores. Selhausen again, 41 yards, 14-10 Warhawks at halftime. Third quarter, it's Selhausen, this time on the ground for his third touchdown of the game, 21-10. McWanago needs to make something happen. Kruger goes to the end zone, but a great interception by Antonio Jose Ramos. And off of the turnover, Selhausen seals the deal. Four scores and 179 total yards. Arrowhead wins 28 to 10. They'll play Bayport in the Division One semifinals. It's huge to be moving on to the Final Four. I mean, even though you're looking, setting your sights on state, and you, well, that's what you want. You got to focus on the week ahead of you. We've learned from the seniors in the past, and they're just so comfortable. Um, and we've watched them lead into the in these deep runs, and I think we're just accustomed to it, and we've grown to know how to do it, I guess. The Greendale Panthers have been on a mission this season. Greendale cruised through the regular season undefeated before steamrolling its first two playoff opponents. Greendale's opponent in level three, a Waukesha West squad, which shared the Classic 8 Conference Championship. I believe that we will win! I believe that we will win! West fans, of course, confident in their team, which led 7-0 until Greendale uses the double pass. Josh Ringelberg to Angel Ramirez to a diving David Johnson with seven apiece. Second quarter, off play action, Connor Blount looks for Dyson Chimura, who hauls it in to put West back on top. It'll be 14 to seven at the half. While their Palm squad performed, the Panthers regrouped. They tied the game early in the third, then they drive again. Ringelberg up top for David Johnson, who makes another great grab. Two plays later, it's Josh Ringelberg getting great blocking and doing the rest himself. The Panthers have their first lead of the night. Fourth quarter now, the Wolverine defense makes a huge play. Dyson Chamura bats the pass, and Garrett Bartelt pulls it in. Bartelt would take it down to the Panthers' six-yard line. Moments later, it's Blount to freshman Peter McCudden, his second score of the game, back to even at 21 apiece. West would take advantage of a special teams miscue with great field position, and Peter McCutton scores again. It's 28-21 Wolverines. Greendale has time for one more drive. With the clock ticking down, Josh Ringelberg scrambles his way to the end zone, but the Panthers are called for a block in the back penalty. They'll get one more shot with one second remaining, but this time the Wolverines' defense holds. West wins 28-21, advancing to face Wanakee in level four. Despite the controversial ending, the two teams gathered at midfield afterwards, showing class both in victory and defeat. I'm excited. I'm ready for the next one. Um, there's no way to describe it. You got to be here in the in the moment to be able to describe it, and it's a wonderful feeling to share it with all these guys. Our kids hung in there, kept believing. The kids kept believing, hanging in there, and uh, we're able to win it at the end. Um, fortunate to be moving on, but it's it's a great feeling.